What was St. John Paul II going to announce on the day he was shot in St. Peter's Square? Find out next on Defending Life. friends and welcome to Defending Life. I'm Janet Morana, Executive Director of Priest for Life and co-founder of the Silent No More Awareness Campaign. I'm also the co-host of the EWTN series, The Catholic View for Women. I bring you the personal greetings of our National Director, Father Frank Pavone, and we are pleased to be joined by Father Dennis Wilde today. Father, welcome to the program. Great to be back, Janet. It is. I know. We were just chatting. We can't believe another season of yes. Defending Life. It just seems to go by so quickly, doesn't it? It sure does. Month after month. <laughs> That's right. And of course, you're busy, as always, on the road traveling for Priest for Life. And uh, what, what are some of the states you've been to since we taped our last show? Well, I've been in Colorado several times. I was in Florida. I was back here in uh, the south in uh, Atlanta a number of times. And I was over in uh, uh, northeast in uh, Connecticut and New York and goes on. <laughs> And I want our viewers to remember, too, how you do concerts, pro-life concerts. You know, they, but people don't realize that you were originally a professor of music at Villanova. 22 years at Villanova. 22 yeah, years at Villanova. And I know, I mean, one of the most popular things, you know, all our, our priests, like you and Father Pavone and the yeah. others travel, you get parish weekends, but you have a unique gift in the concerts you do. God has been good, and I enjoy it so much. Uh, the classical concerts in different parts of the country. And it's together. a way to bring people in to hear it about does, the yeah. life it message. It breaks the ice, you know. It's a it nice, does. It's a nice thing. Well, talk about breaking the ice. You know, the in, in our little tease, I, I referred to an announcement uh, that uh, St. John Paul II was going to make in St. Peter's Square uh, the day uh, he was shot. And what he was going to announce was that the Pontifical Council for the Family, he was going to establish that dicastery. And, uh, you know, as you know, um, uh, that's uh, an important thing. But before we get to, uh, get to talk about that, I think what we should do is start with prayer. We, you know, we've always been doing that on this series. So uh, Pro-Life Reflections for Every Day, as we know, written by Father Pavone, and it's available uh, at our Priest for Life uh, store. They can go online, priestforlife.org slash store. And Father, let's yeah, turn to prayer. Today's prayer, and it's a uh, quote comes from the Mass itself. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and grant us peace in our day. Peace is a fragile gift and a key characteristic of the culture of life. We pray for peace in the midst of every Eucharist and we work to remove the obstacles to receiving peace. Reverence for life opens the way to peace. Truth and justice provide its foundation relationships of mutual love preserve it. Let us pray. Grant us peace, Lord, as well as the courage to defend life. May government leaders and their citizens rejoice in your peace. Amen. 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 And like I was just referring to um, St. John Paul II's comment uh, about establishing a dicastery. And, you know, many of our, our viewers, they might have gone to, they may have gone to Rome, we see pictures of St. Peter's Square, but they don't understand, you know, what happens? What, what, how does the Pope run the Catholic Church? Well, and, uh, you know, he has dicastries, Father. They're correct? like cabinets, you know, we would say cabinets in this country, but it's a little different, of course, but, and it's bigger because in a sense, it, it's much broader. So we have um, the, the Council for the Family, the right. Council for Youth, number of different uh, organizations. Council for, for Laity. Laity, I meant, and uh, that's right. And the youth, uh, for example, the, uh, the youth, World Youth Day comes, comes under from that. that. Dicastery. That's right, yeah. That's right. So there are all these buildings that are around. If you go down the Via della Conciliazione, which runs into St. Peter's, a lot of those buildings on the side are, are places where you and I have been to We've meetings, We've been to actually. many meetings there. And uh, yeah. so it's, uh, so it comes under, it's not just something that comes out of the blue. In other words, it comes under a particular patronage, right. if you will, and then they support this around the world, bring things together, and it's a... Uh, and they, the of course, they, they have meetings. The bishops, uh, when they come to Rome from all over the world, they come to these different as you say, mm -hmm. cabinet department or departments, uh, and of course, uh, dicasteries. Dicasteries. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they, 
they call them dicasteries. Right. Uh, and of course, the Council for the Family, we have a special connection to that. Sure. Father Pavone uh, worked there for uh, several years. And you know, in my recent trip to Rome, of course, we always stop in for meetings at the Council for Family, mm -hmm. and I was very fortunate uh, to have an opportunity, you know, because it is a big deal to get the president of a dicastery to agree to uh, an interview. Mm -hmm. And we were very lucky to hear from uh, Archbishop Vincenzo Paglia. He's the president of the Council for the Family, uh, and uh, he actually invited me into his residence to do bring the cameras in for EWTN and do this interview. So let's hear what he said about the Council for the Family. The Pontifian Council for Family was born in a really particular day. That is on the 13th of May 1981. The date where John Paul II was attacked in St. Peter's Square. Unfortunately, it was impossible, obviously, for the Pope to announce, but in this day, the Pope, St. John Paul II, decided to announce the beginning of the Pontifical Council for Family. And uh, you understand very well the importance of this event. So, we could say that uh, the Pontifical Council for Family is uh, one of the most important gifts of the St. John Paul II to the Church and to the world. And uh, I was really uh, captured when uh, uh, Pope Francis, in the day of the canonization, uh, appointed uh, John Paul II as a patron of family. In this sense, the purpose of the Pontifical Council for Family is to increase, to support, to defend, to show that family is, I, can I say in Italian, la cosa più bella del mondo. This is the family. And that's why I am personally engaged in uh, this purpose. And uh, my little speech in uh, an English not so good, but I would like to, to hit your hearts in order to understand the importance of this institution uh, which uh, every people like to have, to live, and uh, to feel in a really, really deep way. That's why, for us, uh, uh, above all in this time, it is really, really important to spread this gospel of the family. It's a really a good news for our contemporary world. Well, I was very honored to be able to uh, do that interview, and we have a lot more exciting things to talk about when we come back right after the spring. Stay tuned. Powerful new voices are arising in the debate over abortion. The voices of those who have actually experienced it. From coast to coast, women and men who have lost children to abortion are speaking out about its pain and devastation and about the healing and forgiveness they have found through the pro-life movement. Their witness is changing hearts and minds. Former U.S. Senator Zell Miller writes, the most poignant sight for me at this year's annual pro-life march and demonstration in Washington, D.C., was the large number of women holding signs saying they regretted their abortions. And the United States Supreme Court wrote, It seems unexceptionable to conclude some women come to regret their choice to abort the infant life they once created and sustained. Severe depression and loss of esteem can follow, a decision so fraught with emotional consequence. Welcome back to our Defending Life program. Well, besides the Council for the Family operating all year round, every so many years they have these World Meeting of Families. And we had an opportunity also to ask Archbishop Paglia about the World Meeting of Families, which we know is going to be in Philadelphia in September 2015. Let's hear what he had to say, his invitation to come to the World Meeting of Families. 
the uh, eighth world meeting of family will be in Philadelphia in September uh, 2015. It's a really a great event. He was born uh, exactly 20 years ago, uh, that is in 1994, when the United Nations decided to proclaim an year for family. And uh, John Paul II understood the importance of uh, uh, for the church to link with uh, this uh, purpose of the United Nations because you know family is a pandemic of humanity, it's not a Catholic problem or gift, it's a, an institution uh, spread all over the world for thousands and thousands of centuries. And in this sense, I think it is really important to understand the prophetic perspective of this event in September 2015. And the, the title of the event, Love is Our Mission, Family Full Alive, uh, resume in a certain sense uh, the meaning of uh, this uh, the, the meaning of this event. Yes, love is our mission in a world where we are in a sort of the desert of love, where uh, each one of us uh, normally think only about himself, where uh, there are a lot of conflicts where families often are destroyed. We have to remember that love is our mission. It's the mission of the church. It's the mission of each one of us as a believer. Well, of course, you know, Father Dennis, uh, you're from Philadelphia. That's where uh, you are all the time and, uh, you know, stationed. Sure. And you must be excited. I mean, bubbling well, over in Philadelphia with that, the world meaning of families and the Holy Father are going to be in Philadelphia. Lots of things are happening, and uh, they're they're putting together. In fact, they put together a booklet on this. It was a catechesis, right. actually, for uh, preparing it. And uh, it, it's great. I, I live about a mile and a half from where this is going to take place, and a mile and a half from the Liberty Bell as well. So all of these things coming together. And Bishop, right. Archbishop Padia was in Philadelphia, and he rejoiced about the Liberty Bell, and he wants to bring and express that in there. But um, Basically, this catechesis is something put together that is a guide. It's really a guide for all the countries who are going to speak on the family, but right. they're sending representatives, and it's kind of a prism through which they want to operate the questions. And then right. those questions that will be entertained, and that will be produced at the conference itself in, in exactly. September uh, of um, uh, 2015. And it's a beautiful uh, book with the catechesis. And, of course, the theme, Love is Our Mission, the Family Fully alive. That's really the theme of this right. world meeting of families. And I think people don't realize that you can all come and there'll be details. Of, we could go on our website, priestforlife.org slash family. Right. We'll have all the information there with the links and where to go, how to plan to come. Priest for Life, we're going to have a, do an integral part because of our collaboration with the Council for the Family. We're all going to be there at this event. And like you just said, Father, it's a catechesis, this booklet um, of information, even if you can't come. You can get this booklet and you can, uh, you know, uh, read this all, study it, know what's going on and be part of it. True. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. It says the family is the sanctuary of love and life. And those two things go coordinated all throughout the catechesis. It's about what Catholics believe about human purpose, marriage, and the family. I'm just quoting from, right, from quoting that. Right, quoting from it. Mm -hmm. But the title itself, uh, the family fully alive, you know, uh, you can't be fully alive if part of the family is taken away. From abortion, abortion that's you right. You know, and even people who are grieving and so forth, but especially in the area of abortion, which is, you know, it just continues to tear apart families. That's right. Even though they sometimes don't see it that way, but there are people who, siblings, for example, as you know, who 
grow up and they realize there should be somebody else in the family and there That's isn't right. and, and all of that. Missing. So Abortion fully, is uh, fully alive is, is of course, you know, the church making us fully alive with the sacramental life of the church as well, but, but That's not right. that important too. Well, and, and there were like basic, you know, points um, that they had made, uh, key points uh, that are throughout this catechesis, right. uh, chap basically almost like mini chapters and, and points. And, um, you know, it, I'll just highlight a couple of those. Created sure. for joy. The idea, you know, so much of the, so many of the, a lot of the world looks at the, the family, not at the family, but the church in the family as something that's somber and something that's, I don't know. But so many times we need to create that joy and it's not artificial joy. It's that's a joy right. that comes from knowing that God, we are made in the image and likeness of God. Exactly. And it says in there, it says that we are better, bigger than the biological sum of body parts. That's uh, right. We have a spirit there. Well, again, we're going to have this on our website, priestforlife.org slash family. I hope many of our viewers plan to see us there at the World Meeting of Families. The Pope is coming. I mean, this is going to be fabulous. I'm so right. looking forward to it. And we have a lot more to talk about in our Defending Life show uh, today. But first, Father, we're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to take a question from you, our viewers, and give you more action that you can do to help defend life. So stay tuned. The themes of family is central to the church's focus today. Priests for Life, in conjunction with the Vatican's Pontifical Council for the Family, has published meditations on the Stations of the Cross. The Way of the Cross for Families will help the entire family to recommit itself to the pro-life cause. We also offer Father Frank Pavone's reflections on the seven last words of Christ. This CD, The Cross and the People of Life, delves into the spirituality and doctrine of the passion and death of the Lord, tying into those truths the commitment we all have to defend the sanctity of life. Contact us at our toll-free number, 888-735-3448, or go online to ProLifeProducts.org to order these two wonderful products. Thank you. Welcome back to our Defending Life program, where now we're going to take a question that we've received from you, our viewers. Well, Father Dennis, today's question comes from James from Oregon, and he writes, Shouldn't the church be changing minds and hearts through prayer and preaching rather than politics and protest? <laughs> Thank you for your question, James. In fact, changing people's hearts is the solution to every problem that the world faces. But that doesn't mean that we don't have laws. The fact is that while there are good people around whose hearts are not in the right place, there have to be laws to restrain their heartless activities. As Martin Luther King Jr. said, the law cannot get the white man to love me, but it can stop him from lynching me. We also should not overlook the power that laws have to shape minds and hearts. When our children learn in school that something is legal, they are learning that such a thing is right. Whether regarding abortion or anything else, both hearts and laws must be changed. Also, the church has serious obligations in the political arena because while her mission is essentially religious, the political world affects human rights and the salvation of souls. The church teaches moral human behavior and the demands of justice and of the gospel. Therefore, Vatican II said, at all times and in all places, the church should have the true freedom to teach the faith, to proclaim its teaching about society, to carry out its task among men without hindrance, and to pass moral judgment even in matters relating to politics, whenever the fundamental rights of man or the salvation of souls requires it. And as for protest, it is the corollary of proclamation. If we proclaim justice, we protest injustice. If we proclaim peace, we protest violence. If we proclaim life, we protest the culture of death. Thank you for your question. My friends, anytime you have a question for our Priest for Life team, just go to prolifequestions.com and we'll gladly respond to you. 
Well, of course. Uh, what James is pointing out, he started off with prayer. And as you know, Father, at prayercampaign.org, we have a beautiful prayer campaign throughout the year focusing on the life issue. Uh, and uh, we invite our viewers to go there and join our prayer campaign. And of course, you mentioned politics. And again, pol politicalresponsibility.com. Again, all the up-to-date information, how to get involved in that. And finally, you know, when I think of protest, I think we should be protesting the fact that over close to 4,000 children die every day from surgical abortion. We should protest that. And by protesting, maybe try to show people what abortion looks like. Because as, as Father we Frank need to says, see the images. We that's need right. To support them. Yeah. And it, we can go to a special page, priestforlife.org slash images. And that is the number one page on our entire website that's gets viewed, hit. gets hit yeah. every day, number one. And nothing has changed more hearts and minds to say, I had no idea. I had no idea what abortion does to an unborn child. The beautiful also imagery there of, of the unborn child. So uh, these are things that people can put into action, prayer, and, and then action by getting involved. And I always tell people, uh, you know, it's up to you. Every person that you know, that you come in contact, you can change those hearts and minds. Right. Well, thank you again, Father, for uh, another uh, wonderful show. We did a lot. I hope to see everyone in Philadelphia in September 2015, we'll the World Meeting of Families. And uh, it, it's going to be... Uh, we'll take the crack out of the Liberty Bell. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and proclaim liberty for the captives. And the captives, in this case, are the unborn children. That's right. That's right. And without them, you don't have a family. Well, brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us on Defending Life. And remember, we also have a Spanish version of this program on EWTN's Spanish channel. And before we go, let me offer you three items. First, if you have children or grandchildren who do not practice the faith, let me send you a short brochure that Father Pavone has written just for you. It contains 10 points that will guide you about what to say, what to do, how to pray, and how to be reassured in this situation. Ask for the brochure, My Children Don't Practice the Faith, What Should I Do? Second, we at Priest for Life have prepared a special prayer card to St. John Paul II, the Pope of Life. Use this for yourself and also share it with your whole parish, and you could order large quantities too. And third, don't forget to ask us for your supply of our Priest for Life Mass cards for the living and the deceased. And remember, you can invite Father Pavone, Father Wild, myself, and other members of our Priest for Life team, like Alveda King, Brian Kemper, to your churches, your communities, your pro-life events. Check out our website for details at priestforlife.org. On behalf of Father Pavone and our National Director and all our Priest for Life family, I urge you to let us hear from you. Send us your success stories or your questions and comments. And please connect with us on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and more. See priestforlife.org for links to these and other platforms. And remember, there are some abortions only you can stop, some lives only you can save. Join us again next week on Defending Life.